Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. Army officers say the missile, found sometime last week, has been inspected at Roswell, New Mexico, and sent to Wright Field, Ohio, for further inspection. Today we're going to talk about General Ramey and how he emptied the Roswell saucer, but then denied it, and then he did some other stuff, and then he got a promotion. He may have been America's best disinformation agent. Let's look at Balloon Boy. We've covered this little article, RAAF uh, captures flying saucer on ranch in Roswell region. Dated July 8th, 1947. Right? They shipped the, uh, the what they found off to a higher headquarters. Then the next day, the very next day, before the ink is even dry on yesterday's uh, paper, July 9th, 1947, General Ramey empties Roswell saucer. And over here we have the, the story, Ramey says, excitement not justified. Says that this is a weather balloon. This is the genesis of the failure of the United States government to take that opportunity to enlighten America about what is going on. And I should say, enlighten the world. And they didn't. They did not whatsoever. So let's read the article and then we will uh, dissect it. Headline, Ramey says excitement is not justified. General Ramey says disc is a weather balloon. Tehran, July 8th. The flying saucer fever spread to Iran today. Press reports from Zabul, Shosef, and Sarbishe near the Afghan frontier said residents had observed strange star-like bodies in the sky which exploded loudly, leaving a cloud of smoke. The newspaper Maria Rand said the object apparently had something to do with a secret weapon, weapon which they dubbed the V-20. Fort Worth, Texas, July 9th, AP. An examination by the Army revealed last night that mysterious objects found on a lonely New Mexico ranch was a harmless high-altitude weather balloon, not a grounded flying disc. Excitement was high until Brigadier General Roger M. Ramey, commander of the 8th Air Forces, with headquarters here, cleared up the mystery. The bundle of 10-4 broken wood beams and rubber remnants of a balloon were sent here yesterday by Army Air Transport in the wake of reports that it was a flying disc. But the general said the objects were... The crushed remains of a ray wind target used to determine the direction and velocity of winds at high altitudes. Warrant Officer Irving Newton, forecaster of the Army Air Force's weather station here, said, We use them because they go much higher than the eye can see. The weather balloon was found in New Mexico by rancher W.W. W. Brazil. He said he didn't think much about it until he went into Corona, New Mexico last Saturday and heard the flying disc reports. He returned to his ranch 85 miles northwest of Roswell and recovered the wreckage of the balloon, which he had placed under some brush. When Brazil hurried him back to Roswell, where he reported his find to the sheriff's office, the sheriff called the Roswell airfield and Major Jesse A. Marcel, 509th Bomb Group Intelligence Officer, was assigned to the case. Colonel William H. Blanchard, commanding officer of the Bomb Group, reported the find to General Ramey, and the object was flown immediately to the Army airfield here. Was flown immediately to the Army airfield here. Ramey went on the air here last night to announce that New Mexico discovery was not a flying disc. <clears throat> Newton said that when rigged up, the instrument looks like a six-pointed star and sil is silvery in appearance and rises in the air like a kite. In Roswell, the discovery set off a flurry of excitement. 
Sheriff George Wilcox's telephone's lines were jammed. Three calls came from England, one of them from the London Daily Mail, he said. The public relations officer here said the balloon was in his office and it'll probably stay right there. Newton, who made the ex examination, said some 80 weather stations in the United States were using that type of balloon and that it would have come from any of them. He said he had sent up identical balloons during the invasion of Okinawa to determine ballistics information for heavy guns. And that's it. The good amount of detail in this article from Marcel is not addressed. It's just polished over, polished over. If we're going to get any more, if we really want to know more of the story, we should have read the other uh, story in this paper. Find nude body of strangled woman in New York hotel. At least that probably has some truth to it. But Ramey didn't really address why the balloon team didn't go out to retrieve it. Why did the why did the phone call get it directed to the intelligence officer for a balloon? And what about Mr. and Mrs. Dan Wilmot? They've been totally pushed under the rug. Were they threatened? I mean, there there is no mention of them and what and their eyewitness testimony anywhere in the Ramey story. It's just oh, it was a weather balloon. It wasn't sent to a higher headquarters. And how in the world does anybody confuse a weather balloon from a flying disc? Apparently, General Ramey does. General Balloon Boy Ramey does. And he just, oh, no, 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 a weather balloon. And, and, it's just, and then it's just kind of incredible. I mean, the very next day... I mean, remember, keep in mind that according to this timeline in this paper, the Army had it for a week, almost a week, I think, before they sent it on to a higher headquarters. Now, if you had a bunch of tin foil and some balsa wood or whatever else is in this weather balloon, maybe some silk string, do you not think within a week you could figure out that, ooh, you know, that's not a flying saucer. That's my kid's kite from, you know, last March. <laughs> you know? I mean, I have found balloons in the desert. Another balloon. Another Mylar balloon. Right now, I'm in the middle of the desert. Closest town's probably 30 miles away. Happy birthday. I mean, I have found balloons in the desert. Did those look like flying saucers to you, or did they kind of look like balloons? And, and I found these, and ironically, I found these balloons several hundred miles away from the Roswell crash site. So, I mean, now these were in California, in the California Mojave Desert. The other was in Nevada Mojave Desert. I get that. But still, I found balloons in the desert, and I was pretty sure. I, I knew they were not flying discs from the road. And they were far, far away. I'm a mildly intelligent person. And I would put to you that in our current rhetorical environment that people from 1947 were still smart enough, maybe even smarter, to differentiate between flying saucer and balloon. Right? So let's look at the timeline a little bit more. 
Lieutenant General Roger M. Ramey. Roger Maxwell Ramey was born in Emblem, Texas on September 9th, 1903. He attended North Texas Teachers College and he entered the United States Military Academy in 1924. He graduated and commissioned as a second lieutenant in the regular army on June 9th, 1928. This is from airforce.mil. The link will be in the video description below. So let's skip all the other stuff and go right to where he was. Uh, let's, let's just look at this. Ramey was transferred to the 5th Air Force in October of 1942. The following January, 43, he was appointed commanding officer of the 43rd Bomb Group, going with it to the Southwest Pacific. In June 1944, General Ramey was named Chief of Staff of the 21st Bomber Command, and that November moved with it to the Pacific, 1944. Assuming command of the 58th Bomb Wing in India, in January of 1945, Ramey took to it with the Marineris that April. He was transferred with it to the Continental Air Forces in Bowling Field, Washington, D.C., September 45, and two months later moved with it to Fort Worth Army Air Base in Texas. During June and July of 1946, Ramey commanded Task Force 1.5, the Army Air Force portion of the combined Army-Navy operations at Bikini Atoll. Bikini Atoll. What was going on at Bikini Atoll, I wonder? Now keep in mind, this period of time is when the United States started nuclear testing, blowing the ever-loving crap out of the Bikini Atoll with nuclear weapons. He commanded it. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? When the 8th Air Force was reactivated, the 58th Wing under General Ramey was incorporated into the remnants of the 8th and headquarters was established at Fort Worth Army Air Base in November of 1946. For a few weeks, General Ramey was Chief of Staff of the 8th and in January of 1947 assumed command of the 8th. Then the uh, military biography jumps right to 1950. They kind of step through every single year coming out of school and then jump right before. You know, they mention that um, January of 1947, he assumed command of the, uh, I guess, the 8th Air Force. Then they skip ahead three whole years where he became assistant to the Deputy Chief of Staff of Operations at Air Force Headquarters, Washington, D.C. Now, that is quite a bump. You know, he's a command of uh, an Air Force wing, and then he gets a cushy D.C. job. In the following month, when the directorate, directorate of Plans and Operations split into two directorates under Deputy Chief of Staff for Operations, General Ramey was appointed to Director of Operations for the Air Force. Director of Operations. That's a pretty heady job. He must have done something right. But let's look at his promotions. They list his promotions in order. He was commissioned a second lieutenant on June 9th, 1928. Then promoted to first lieutenant in 1934. To captain in 1938. To major permanent in 1945. To major general temporary October 29th, 1947. October 29th, 1947. Three months after Roswell. Then the uh, next year, he got a permanent promotion to Brigadier General. 1948, almost a year to the date of the Roswell incident. He went from a major, a permanent major status in 1945 to Brigadier General. 1948. Three years he went from major to brigadier general. That's quite a big jump, especially the previous year you managed as a director of operations, somebody that knows what they're doing. Evidently he had great operational skills in getting all of these lies told, don't you think? So he got really fast advancement up until about a year after Roswell. Job well done. And then his uh, 
promotion started getting a little thin. He was almost at the top of the ladder by that time. He got a huge jump during the year after Roswell. Uh, 1952, Major General. In 1954, he got a temporary uh, promotion to Lieutenant General. But there's a problem. There's a slight problem. You see... When he's in Roswell with the Mylar material and the balsa wood, saying that whatever they dug up out of the desert was a weather balloon, where's the actual balloon envelope? They don't show it. They just show a target. It looks like a kite. It really does look like a kite. Okay, let's, 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 go, let's go beyond that. Let's just, let's just get beyond that um, misalignment of reality, shall we say. The photo also shows in his hand a telegram. A telegram. And through the wonders of Photoshop, we can see, we can get a scan of the telegram, and we can kind of pull these letters out through Photoshop. God, don't you just love you some Photoshop? And so the cable in his hand, what we can read, now it's all bent and wrinkled and bunched up, and you, you, as you can see here, Urgent Headquarters, Army Air Force, Washington, July 8th, 1947, from Vandenberg, from the 8th Air Force, subject Roswell. Fort Worth Army Air Force acknowledges that a disc is next new find west of the cordon at location, or in addition, was a wreck, pod, or airfoil, near operation at the ranch, and the victims of the wreck were you forwarded to the team at Fort Worth, Texas. Now, we were told this was shipped to uh, Wright Pat in Ohio. Very few people confuse Ohio with Texas. <clears throat> Aviators in the disc... They will ship for A1 5th Army AMU or Army Air Force. <clears throat> That's not exactly clear. <clears throat> by, 29, by B29 or C47, Wright Air Force assesses airfoil or assist flyout at Roswell. Assure, or about, that, or noon, CIC team said this misstate meaning of story and said late today, next sent out PR of weather balloon would fare better if they had land demo crews. Ramey. That's a lot. I mean, no, who in the world drags out their B-29 or a C-47 for what can fit in a shoebox. <laughs> you, you don't need that. You, you, who, who flies a C-47 or B-29 to retrieve the, the contents of what can be put into a shoebox or a small suitcase? So there's that little problem. And because Ramey was so good at the director of ops on this disinformation campaign that he was awarded handsomely the next year. And he went on to retire after the Korean War. But what do you think? You know, we see the photo of him with it in, in his hand. We see the, um, the enhanced image. We see the... Um, the examination and the forensics and the forensic evidence of the uh, cable in his hand, at least what we can read of it. And what's on the cable is completely different from what's coming out of his mouth. So for me, using a scientific forensic lens and first principles thinking, I think, you know, the first principle Greek uh, philosophers would have called BS on this. I mean, you have all of these people. It goes right to the intelligence office. It doesn't go to the balloon ground crew. 
at all. And the, 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 the weather balloons that they send up, it really didn't even look like the weather balloons of the day. Why did they send out the intelligence officers? Why did he, why did uh, Marcel take out a crew to the crash site to retrieve a weather balloon? I mean, if it was that small, the, uh, the uh, farmer could have just packed it up, threw it in, a bunt in the front of his, uh, of his truck, along with all the NABs wrappers, and drive it to the Army airfield. Why, why did Mar what, if it was a weather balloon, why did Marcel have to take out an uh, investigative team? Why, did he, why wasn't the, the balloon group, the balloon uh, maintenance guys, retrieval team, sent out to get it? Or a guy. You doesn't need ten guys to pick up that balloon with the scraps of this balloon. And where was the balloon envelope? We the, the, we assume that the mylar and the balsa wood sticks are the uh, the payload or the gondola. Well, where's the rest of the balloon? We never did see that. We never did see it. And then what of the aviators or the visitors? That's in the disc. Whatever happened to them? Oh, wh wh were they riding in the weather balloon? So I think General Ramey is Balloon Boy. I think he's Balloon Boy. I mean, that he, and I think he may be one of the biggest disinformation agents in American history. That's just me. You make your own decision. You look at all this evidence yourself. Always investigate this stuff yourself. And you always keep a critical eye. And remember what Carl Sagan said. With any extraordinary claim, it must be backed up with extraordinary evidence. So all you, you, we have to do our due diligence, especially as a community. But, I mean, oh my God, really? You know, but this is just outlandish. This is just so far off the beaten path of reality and credulity that you have to look closer. And we did, and we found a, uh, allegedly, a note or a telegram to Ramey about what's really going on. And we also have to credit Ramey for having the most disbelievable cover story ever. It would have been a better lie to say, well, you know, we had a troop transport full of dog food that dropped out of a, a, a cargo plane at 20,000 feet and it fell on its front. And we're very, very sorry. That would have been more believable, right? And that's about all I've got to say about General Ramey and his very convenient um, promotions in the Army and the Air Force. You know, but here you put a guy in charge of the Bikini Atoll and a really highly, highly, highly sensitive nuclear testing at Bikini Atoll. You don't put a schlub in charge of that. Remember, this is just 24 months after we bombed Nagasaki and Hiroshima. And you've got to have a lot of trust in somebody that's passed a lot of security tests to put them in charge of nuclear testing for the United States military. So he came with a lot of trust, and they, and they assigned him the job of covering up Roswell, at least in my mind. And they rewarded him handsomely for it. So that's it from here. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you like what I'm doing on the channel, please subscribe. If you got any questions, drop those in the comments below. And until next time, I'll be your lap partner. Take care. Bye-bye.